that, that you know, um, present themselves and, and, and present it very strongly when we were looking at the play um, as theatre, which is what, what we were doing. But his apartment, with the seal of Caesar, tis his will. I found it in his closet, tis his will. Let but the commons hear this testament, and they would go and dip their napkins in sacred blood. Yea, beg a hair of him for memory and dying mention it within their wills, bequeathing it as a rich legacy unto their issue. But I must not read it. It is not meet you know how Caesar loved you. You are not stones, you are not wood, but men. And hearing the will of Caesar, it will inflame you, it will make you mad. It is good you know not that you are his heirs, for if you should, oh, what would come of it? I fear I have overshot myself to tell you of it. I fear I wrong the honourable men whose daggers have stabbed Caesar. I do fear it. If you have tears, prepare to shed them now. Caesar put it on. Look, through this, well, Cassius stabbed. It, this through, place, through this place, through this Cassius dagger. Play a place around Cassius' dagger through. See what a rent the envious Casca made. Through this, the well beloved Brutus stabbed. And as he plucked his cursed steel away, mark how the blood of Caesar followed it, as if rushing out of doors to be resolved if seen it Brutus so unkindly not to know. For Brutus, as you know, was Caesar's angel. Judge all you gods, how dearly Caesar loved him. This was the most unkindest cat of all. For when the noble Caesar saw him stab, ingratitude more strong than traitor's arms quite vanquished him. And he burst his mighty heart. Oh, what a fall was there, my countrymen, that I and you and all of us fell down whilst bloody treason flourished on us. Good friends, sweet friends, let me not stir you up to such a sudden flood of mutiny. They that have done this deed are honorable. What private griefs they have, alas, I know not that made them do it. They are wise and honorable, and with reasons will answer you. Sweet friends, let me not steal away your hearts. I am no orator, as Brutus is. <laughs> but as you know me all, a plain blunt man that did love my friend, and that they know full well that gave me public leave to speak of him. For I have neither wit nor worth nor words, action nor utterance, nor power of speech to stir men's blood. I only speak right on, show you sweet Caesar's wounds, poor, poor dumb mouths, and bid them speak for me. But were I Brutus, and Brutus Antony, here were an Antony who would ruffle up your spirits and put a tongue in every wound of Caesar to ruffle up the stones of Rome to rise and mutiny. Here is the will of Caesar, and under Caesar's seal. To every Roman citizen, to every several man, he gives 75 drachmas. Moreover, he hath left to all his walks his private orchards on this side Tiber. He hath left them to you and to your heirs. Common pleasures to walk abroad and recreate yourselves. Here was a Caesar. When comes such another?
Now listen, I have a concern thing about, about Brutus, but I just want to say that a friend of mine, Caesar, is now dead, and yesterday he was alive and well. He was a very nice man, and but to me I have no reason to hate him or to kill him. But what, Sin what Brutus has done, I must say I don't like him. I know he's a very good man, honorable man, and comes from a good family. But I must say, they won't speak for themselves. Just look at this. He's actually butchered Caesar, and Caesar is now dead. Caesar, I'm sure, was a nice man, and would have done a lot for you. He was offered the crown three times about a week ago, and he never accepted it. Now, you can't say he was a selfish man, or he wanted to gain control. And I wouldn't say he wanted to be a tyrant, or would have been a tyrant, because he was actually taking the crown, or being a king. So, I just want to say that whatever you think, it's up to your decision. But Brutus, as you all know, is a great leader, and I like him. He's a friend of mine, but to tell you the truth, what, what he's done to Caesar is not good. Caesar, as you all should know, is not a bad man, because as you might know, he left us a will, left us a property to and he also left you, actually he left you the country. Here is the will that Caesar left Janice got it from, my, from the other day. Would you like me to read it out? Getting annoyed and get mad, lose your temper, and think, Brutus, as you all know, as a good man, has done something wrong. Whatever you think is wrong or right, I think it's wrong. But this, let it speak for itself, as you all want me to read it out, it says here that, I'll just say what it says. It says here that Caesar has left us the whole country, he's left us a park, some houses, and some money for the people. Not Brutus, not Antony, not me, not Brutus, or his other companions, or his major friends, but for you, the citizens, and now he's dead. I don't Long way, Antony! Long way, Antony! Let's get the conspirators! It's a bit like a chorus 
And that's one reason that, that Shakespeare wrote it in this way. He's able to use it as a bit of a chorus. And the chorus really is, um, what is the chorus? Can you see what the chorus is? For Brutus is an honourable man, right? So, I mean, every time he comes to that line, it's the chorus. Um, who, who, who would like to read it? Yeah, you'll have a go good. Right. So every time he says, uh, Brutus is an honourable man, um, I want you all to shout chorus at him, right? And let's just see how many choruses there are. Brutus is an honourable man. Chorus. So I think, so I think all, all honourable men. Come, I speak to them. Come, I speak to I speak Come on. It's come on. Come on. I. So speak in Caesar's funeral. Here he was my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. Some other source. 
and then he took it and he made it into a play, and if it didn't quite suit him or he didn't think it was going very well, he just changed it. And sometimes he didn't, he wasn't even consistent in his changes. In the Merchant of Venice, one minute, um, um, somebody is saying, somebody owes somebody some money, and one minute they're saying, I'll give you twice as much, and then two pages later, he said, somebody else says, he's just offered you three times as much. Completely inconsistent. He didn't check, did he? I mean, if he'd been if he'd been doing his exams at school, he'd have got marked down straight away, wouldn't he? I mean, did, did you have you noticed what you said on the previous page? Well, the answer for Shakespeare was no, and he wasn't bothered either. Uh, the other thing he does is that he introduces characters. I mean, you have a really good time. I've done this, and it's really good fun. If you if you like um, if you like reading Shakespeare, or you get to like reading Shakespeare, you have a lot of fun uh, tracing Shakespeare's lost characters. He will suddenly mention somebody in much ado about nothing in about the second scene. He goes on about this man's son. And you think, oh, yeah, that's an important character. He's going to appear any minute. He never appears. And you think, why is he talking about this guy's son? We never see him again. What's happened to him? Um, there's all, there are lots and lots of things you can, you can say about that. So I mention these things because it makes you realize that what Shakespeare wanted to do was create a really good play. He wanted something really interesting that people were going to watch, just that we were interested in watching the three of them there. That was what he was after. And that was all he cared about. He, he didn't, he wasn't interested in saying to the people, people, I've made up this wonderful story. No, he took the story from someone else and he didn't pretend to anybody that he'd made it up. He often took stories that everybody knew. So nobody was fooled. He didn't think that he'd made the story up. He didn't bother about whether he was inconsistent. That didn't worry him. He just went right ahead. Now, I think it's quite important to remember that when you're reading it because you really have to, all the time I think you're reading a Shakespeare play, you actually have to think how it was for him when he was writing it. And what he was writing was something he was going to see in this empty space. Whether it was this empty space or an empty space like the one in that little picture. That was what he was thinking about all the time he was writing. Whether it was going to work as a play, whether you were going to find it exciting, interesting. So. I think just that's really, if, if, if we do anything today, I hope that I can sort of give you the sense of how he does that. And that's really, it's because he does it so successfully, because he, he did it so amazingly successfully, that you're all reading it now, 300 years, 350 years after he died. And I'm still standing up here, and you know, I've been um, acting in Shakespeare. I acted in Shakespeare when when I was young and I've been directing Shakespeare a long while and it doesn't actually, I never sat on a production and think, uh, yeah, well, you know, we'll do that one because the company that I direct, you know, we, we take Shakespeare to schools and so I kind of look at the, the text that you have to study and I never think, oh, you know, well, you know, we'll have to do Julius Caesar again. I always think, oh, yippee, I really mean that. I just always do feel like that, I think. Wow, it's just great because he had this wonderful sense of what was going to make a really, really good play. So from my point of view, the great thing about this theatre is that I can move the seats where I want them and make the space to act on where I want it. That's something I think is very important about theatre is that the idea that there's a space and something happens in that space. Um, there's a very um, famous theatrical director called Peter Brook, and he wrote a very famous book, book called The Empty Space. And uh, if you ever speak to any actor, they'll direct, they'll tell you about the empty space. And I'll show you what Peter Brook said about the empty space. Right? <laughs> 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 